the soothing sound of ink related packaging. Enjoy the montage of me pretty much ripping through these boxes and scoring uh, the ink samples that are pretty much the highlight of my month. But ignore the fact that I'm five months behind in my enjoyment, as you can see. I have five boxes here since August that I am actually going to crack open. So enjoy the sounds of cracking into that ink as I am actually feeling very creative and inspired. But you know, before we get inspired, isn't there a pen that I should review or something that came out? I think so. Hmm. Let's check that out first. Twiz we glow purple. Time to open it up. So of course, for some reason here, I forgot that there are stickers on either side of the box. It's been so long since I've opened a new pen, I guess. But as you can see, I put the scissors away when I figured it out. And, um, was actually kind of pleasantly surprised when I saw the color. Uh, standard Twisby paperwork that we don't need, as well as the most important remark, no rubbing alcohol. Don't, don't need that. And very pleasant purple, um, almost pastel-y, uh, reminiscent of another pen, which I'll talk about a little bit later, but Here's our first look and rotate. So hopefully you can kind of see the sheen, the shine, the gloss, the glory. That is the glow purple. Some things I think are better done in the right lighting. So let's light this candle. Ah, little glitch in the matrix, but that's much better to set the mood. And with all these new ink samples, I have a lot more Q-tips to do something with. Okay, so changing it up a little bit. So the plan is to utilize my glow in the dark items to make some art. Hence our glowing pen. It actually glows a nice uh, blue. Uh, surprisingly versus purple okay so we're back so I pretty much have my canvas uh, taped up how I want it to uh, these scissors are so like glow tastic it almost you know takes out the glow of the pen keep in mind I do have a candle going giving some light so the candle as you can see does hide some of the glowiness of the pen, but at least still glow in the dark. And the best part, the used Q-tips. We're just going to randomly sprinkle. A generous sprinkle of Q-tips. Don't think I'm gonna use them all. I might do this again. But can't tell what color is going where, so that is what's gonna be the fun part on here just kind of making sure that all of my open areas do have some q-tip contact all right and this is what we end up with i'm just taking a bottle uh that's a mister um, and going to heavily spray my q-tips gonna maybe give them a light mist to give them some weight This took a few minutes, so I'm gonna speed it up. But I did wanna highlight if you are using older Q-tips, you will have to heavily saturate them to get them to start bleeding the inky goodness they have locked inside. So enjoy. And we're back and uh, the canvas is dry. It's been about an hour or two. There's still a few um, wet spots on top of the uh, tape, but for the most part, to me, it looks like everything is dry. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, take off my Q-tips. 
Um, pretty happy that I can finally throw these away. Um, for some reason, the ink hoarder inside me is saying I could use these again. But we're going to go ahead and throw them away because I've had them for a while. And not being too careful because I don't mind if maybe some of it gets a little bit messed up or mixed up or smeared. I'm trying to pick them straight up, though, for the most part. But, you know, it's abstract art, so I don't mind. And I'm just throwing the used tips into a box, so uh, not just throwing them on my carpet to the side. Okay, so the lines, uh-oh. Uh well, they stay pretty crisp, but it looks like there's a little bit of wetness under that piece of tape there. So that's going to be the end result for now. Uh, when it fully dries, I probably am going to just go ahead and ink up some black ink in my fountain pen and maybe doodle along. All right, we have played enough with art. Um, figured it's time to see how this glow in the dark stacks up. So, lights out. Now I did still keep the scissors in here because whatever glowing material these scissors are made of, I mean, you can see how awesome and bright these are. So I still kind of wanted to compare it uh, to the pens. Um, I do have a candle still over here. So remember this candle is giving off some light. If I move this candle far away, uh, the pens look uh, much brighter. So I'll put a little way in the corner. Um, but as you can see, we have our glow green uh, Twisby Eco here. Still looking awesome, but these scissors are definitely outperforming. Um, but you can at least see the glow green has a great glow. And our purple, which actually has a blue glow to it. I am so happy they didn't make it glow green as well and gave it pretty much another dimension uh, with these glow in the dark pens. And then this was my DIY uh, pen that remember I sprayed with a glow in the dark spray paint. So just wanted to kind of analyze them all together. And once again, these scissors, I mean, they look extra bright. They, they are really bright. They look super bright on camera. I'm just gonna move these out of the shot because they are trying to steal the show of the pins we have. So remember at the top, this is that Twisby Glow Green. This is our new pin. And this is the Glow in the Dark Twisby that I did try to recreate. Um, sadly, I did also purchase some Amazon Glow in the Dark paints uh, from left to right. There's a blue, green, yellow, and white, which you can barely see. But I just kind of wanted to compare how the glow in the dark paint stacks up because as you see, we kind of have a nice little color family of glowliness. Let me try to move this candle a little bit more. Maybe that will help. Not too sure if the candle's throwing it off or not. It probably is because we can actually see these colors. Hmm. let's take a brief break okay a little better as far as the glow in the dark paint but as you can see it has been charging for the same time as the pens it is not doing a good job uh, the white here and the blue here are really the only ones that have that glow pigment. It could be a user error. The paints do have to be stirred um, to get the glow in the dark pigment to mix through. So maybe I did not mix them enough. I'm not 100% sure, but as we can see, all three of these pens are looking fantastic. So my biggest thing that I am curious on is how long will this glow last? because I think this is an awesome collection, especially maybe if you are writing by candlelight or maybe some low lighting. Um, I think these would really be fun to kind of set the mood or set the tone with 
the added light that they do present. Now keep in mind, they are showing up very bright on the camera. In person, they are not this bright. So of course, most of y'all will probably only have these two, unless you uh, went ahead and DIY'd yourself a glow in the dark pen. But very cool that you can almost see in the pen the glowing as well. So it's glowing outside and inside of the cap. Nice feature, definitely. Real quick, I just realized that when I'm posting these timestamps as far as five minutes, it is this time of me showing the pin plus an additional five minutes. So it actually be more than five minutes long, but let's look at the first shot. All right, just checking in about five minutes in, the glow is still going strong. I still am passing by the scissors. So that way you can see these bad boys are still very bright. But once again, remember, cameras are designed to pick up and find light. So uh, these scissors are not as bright as they are actually appearing in this video footage, but still wanted to show you the progress of the pins as well as the scissors. We'll check back in a few more minutes. All right, we're coming in at 10 minutes. So you can kind of tell uh, they are slightly dimmer uh, to my eyes, uh, but still gonna pass the scissors by. So you can compare and see that our scissors that are glow in the dark are going strong and the pins are uh, not too bad. So check in in about five more minutes. All right, so we're at about 15 minutes. Here's our scissor pass, still going strong. Okay, so it's very faint, but it's still picking up some light. Scissors still going strong, but you can see even those aren't as bright as they were. As you can see uh, on the camera, they are barely lit up. Uh, the scissors still going pretty strong, uh, but you can tell not as vibrant as usual, but the pins themselves, I'm going to call this the end of the line. As you can barely see any glow in the darkness. Um, if it's dark, definitely they are still a little bit lit up, but as you can see, they are very barely lit and still very dim. Um, of course, I am using my phone uh, for the camera, so there is a little bit of pixelation in here. So I do apologize for that, but I can only use the resources I have. So hopefully this kind of gives you a good idea on how long the glow in the dark will be useful should you be riding by candlelight or in the evening um, or some other fun activity like that. But let's shine some light back on. So there you have it back into the light. We have tested the glowability, the luminosity of uh, the Twisbees that do react to light. Uh, now it's time for a color comparison. Um, this one was actually easy and definitely forgive the fact that my Twisby Lilac desperately needs a cleaning. Um, <laughs> I will get to that um, ASAP. However, if you look at both of these together, they are pretty much the exact same shade of purple. Um, I think they should have probably called this the glow lilac because literally if this is lilac and this is glow purple, I don't see any different um, shade um, in them. I'm gonna bring it up closer. The only difference is the fact that the glow purple is 
translucent. Um, as you can see with the comparison, that lilac is totally opaque, whereas you can see through the glow purple. Uh, even as I take out the cap, you can actually see the fountain pen rotated inside of it, as well as exiting the cap. And we will slowly insert it back in, as you can see right through it. So it's pretty much see-through. It is not a solid color, which is perfectly fine. I'm pretty sure, <clears throat> excuse me, that that um, makes it uh, glow better. Also, definitely sorry about uh, the tardiness of this video, because I know this pen's been out for a minute, but as you see, you know, um, I definitely was a little bit under the weather. And of course, y'all know I do have a house at this point, so there's things that I'm getting together, as well as taking care of myself. Um, but it took so long also since I wanted to do my art project. So this end part, not going to take too much time as I did want to put it besides the transparent purple. Um, so that way you can kind of get a feel for the color there. And then also let me zoom in again, because as we can see for the transparent, transparent is exactly as it says it is. It is very transparent, very see-through. It's obvious that we can even see the um, cap protector, whereas the glow green is that translucent, kind of that milk glass look where you can kind of see, but not 100%. And then of course that lilac is completely opaque where you cannot see anything inside that cap. Um, even though I'm just getting this for the three shades in the purple family that we have. Loving the look at this, uh, which is funny that this is the transparent purple and this is the glow purple. But as you can see, these are two totally different shades of purple. Whereas the lilac definitely, you know, the glow purple I'm saying looks more like glow lilac versus a glow purple if Twisby is considering uh, this the shade of purple. Uh, this purple does remind me of the Twisby that I tried to recreate just a solid purple one that I did with some nail polish so this was my version of a opaque purple and then I have my version of the shiny lilac as well just for some comparison because I think um, carrying these three would be awesome. And remember, this is a lilac that I did put that glitter uh, fingernail polish on. So um, I think these three would be awesome to have together. And they all coordinate as well. Gonna keep it short there. I would like to go a little bit deeper into the color comparison. However, I don't want my video to be too long-winded. Ah, I'm already long-winded. Let's slow things down. There was one thing I forgot to talk about um, in reference to uh, one of the comments I got prior. Let's look at that bonus footage now. And a bit of bonus footage. Uh, so in response to awesome Zoe blogs, they did ask, what do I use for my pen storage? Uh, currently, I'm using uh, this simple test tube holder that I got off of Amazon. It is some uh, clear plastic acrylic, as well as plastic slides that you slot in. As you can see, uh, the Ecos fit pretty securely in there. Um, even if I shake it, there's really minimal wiggleage. Um, but what I will say is on like your 580s, your VAC uh, 700s, there is a little bit of gap. They are a little bit more girth thier. They have more girth or, you know, uh, thicker than the Eco, so they don't fit all the way down. However, they do pass through two of the plates. So as you can see, it does have wiggleage but you know, it's not too severe. Um, this one does hold about 50. Uh, there are five slots by 10 slots. As you can see, even me with my sizable collection, 50 is enough. Eventually I may have to expand 
Um, I like to have it with my rose gold Twisbees in one roll, which I am excited that they are going to add that royal green rose gold at the end of the year because that kind of brings more variety versus the black, white, and smoke. Um, this middle row was going to be for miscellaneous Twisbees. I do have my irises, the VAC 700, as well as the 580 iris. And then everything else is the Eco and Eco T, um, including the ones that I've kind of custom made for myself. Uh, however, my collection is sadly missing that Twisby Sunset Orange, which I do hope to acquire one day, as well as the Twisby Turquoise. Um, this is the Twisby Blue and this is that Twisby Cerulean. It's just so mar remarkable how similar they look on camera. Like you cannot tell the difference, but in person you can tell the difference. Um, so just goes to show you my phone quality may not be a thousand percent. And here is the glow purple we just looked at next to the lilac. And then we have our glow green here next to my two jades. Uh, this is the glow in the dark jade that I created. And then this is that original jade. Not that it matters or anything, uh, which is what, but hopefully this kind of goes to show you, it does bring me joy to see the colorful variety. And with Twisby coming out with so many pens, besides cleaning them, which we've seen I need to do, I also need to reorganize how I have them color coded because it is a little bit off um, right now, but it does have a general kind of theme which I do enjoy looking at. So hopefully this answers that question. If you have something where you store them or they look beautiful, uh, please do share. Um, I don't have a problem with this looking industrial, but if there was something better to put these pins in, I definitely would be interested um, as I wish I had something where they could be tiered um, because you know, when you're looking at them, they're pretty much level. So if I had something that each level was a little bit higher, kind of like a spice rack tiered uh, situation, uh, I think that would be preferential for me so I can actually, you know, see them sticking up a little bit. For the bird's eye view, awesome. But you know, when you're looking at them straight on, either you're only gonna see the roll of rose gold or if you're on the regular eco side, you know, kind of plain. Whereas when you see the whole variety, kind of brings it home however this video is already long enough and long-winded but hopefully uh you had some fun tonight um i know i did especially with the artwork and getting that glow in the dark comparison because you know i'm all about that science but once again whatever time of day it is in your area good night good morning good evening good day and goodbye